pass your real estate exam with PrepAgent.com. Remember, keep it concise and keep it simple. An easement is a right held by one person to use the land of another for a specified purpose, such as access to a property. In talking about easement, you'll hear the terms ingress, which means to enter, and egress, which means to exit. An impertinent easement involves two properties owned by two different owners. The two properties involved are called the dominant and servient tenement. When you're not sure about who is who, just think about what the two words mean. Dominant, they are dominating, they are in charge. Servient, they are serving. So therefore, the servient tenement is serving the dominant tenement's purpose. In more tangible terms, the dominant tenement is walking over the servient tenement's property. Very simple. Think of this way and may be confusing sometimes is the dominant tenement property is typically smaller than the servient tenement property. For example, your property can be landlocked, which means that it has no direct access to a public road. So to access your property from the public road, you must cross someone else's property. That property is now serving your purpose and is now the servient tenement in what is now an impertinent easement. The easement will continue after you and your neighbors sell your properties to others. An easement impertinent attaches itself to a piece of property. It's said to run with the land, which means that whenever the property is sold, the new owner has the same rights to the use of the easement as the old owner did. Under the statute of frauds law, which exists in some fashion in every state, easements must be in writing to be valid. Another type of easement is called an easement in gross. An easement in gross has no dominant tenement, because although there is a property being crossed, there is no property to go to. Typically, easements in gross that you may see are utility companies. For example, the electric company wants to connect lines between two poles. They need to cross your property to do this. This would be an easement in gross. A court order creates an easement by necessity to permit someone to gain access to a property. For example, say property owner A sells to buyer B a back portion of a land that neglects to give buyer B an easement for access. If A refuses to give B the easement, B can go to the court and have a pertinent easement created. An easement by prescription is an easement that is created by the actions of one person against the interests of another person. An example may help explain this type of easement. Every night when your neighbor Joe comes home, he drives his car across a corner of your property. How annoying. But the reason doesn't matter. He simply does it. You see him, but never stop him. And he does it for a long time. Eventually you get tired of him driving across your property and you tell him to stop. But he says, no way, I got an easement by prescription. Joe takes the matter to court, and the court agrees with him. Joe now has a permanent easement by prescription across your property. Easements by prescription require court order as they are a result of a lawsuit. The fact that Joe's actions had persisted for a long period of time came into play. That length of time varies according to which state you're in. You saw Joe cross your property. His use was open and what the lawyers call notorious, meaning it wasn't hidden. In a sense, by not telling Joe to stop sooner, you gave him silent permission to use your property. Crazy, right? So let's talk about how to end easements. Easements can be terminated in several ways, including an agreement or release. The person who possesses the easement, known as the dominant tenement, agrees to give it up or release it to the person across whose property the easement exists, the servient tenement. You can also end an easement by merging. A has an easement across B's property. B buys A's property, the easement disappears, as obviously you would not need an easement across your own property. Next, there's abandonment. Simply said, you stop using it. For one reason or another, you stop going to the property. However, unlike a dog, when you abandon an easement, it will cease to exist. With that being said, on a side note, please rescue a dog. Okay, last but not least, the need no longer exists. We discussed before how you could create an easement by necessity. Well, what if that need no longer exists? Well, if you could prove that, then in that case, the easement will not exist either. For more great information to get past a real estate exam, remember, go to prepagent.com.